Good afternoon. I guess I'm here between you and the break, so I'll try to make sure that you stay awake. Well, first of all, thank you, Texas A&M, to host us here. Um, I am what's known as a senior ambassador. I've been an ambassador since the creation of the program back in 2012, I think, or at least the numbers, I think, right? Uh, I'm Ella Weinstein. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. It's a disease. Once you get it, there is no treatment. You will be stuck with it. I'm supposed to be retired, but that's going to happen in my next life. So for the last 20 years, I've been creating companies, doing things that people look at me and say, why do you do that? I've been in the field known as marine renewables. Not too many people know what it is. It is conversion of energy from the ocean into electricity or other forms of energy. So my last company, which is I'm doing right now, is uh, looking at developing floating offshore wind, studying in California and then propagating along the coast of the United States. So it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the first Native American award winner and the first entrepreneur in this category. Her name is Suzanne Singer. Uh, Suzanne Sing Singer. She is a member of the Navajo tribe. So this is actually the first time we do have a Native American as an award winner, which is incredible. <clears throat> Suzanne spent much of her childhood at her grandparents' rural home on Navajo Reservation. They had no access to grid, electricity, indoor plumbing, and simple daily tasks took a lot of time to perform. So years later, she began to realize the profound impact energy access has, especially on tribal people. Despite abundance of renewable energy available on native lands, there is, um, in the Navajo Nation, about 15,000 households do not have any electricity. Navajo culture teaches that if you want to accomplish something in life, it is up to you. Both of Suzanne's parents lifted themselves out of poverty with STEM education. Her mother, Ella, I think is in the room, was, there you go in the back, was an example to Suzanne. However, as Suzanne said, it took her a while to realize that her mother was actually with science. And she didn't really become science forward looking person until much, much later. Um, she decided to pursue science based education by obtaining a bachelor's of engineering degree in mechanical engineering from University of Arizona and MS and PhD degrees from University of California at Berkeley. For eight years, she worked as a staff engineer at Sandia and Lawrence Livermore National Labs. Her work at the National Labs always included Native American component. She worked tirelessly together and inspired multidisciplinary teams to research and improve energy access for Native Americans. Her work at the Liver, um, Lawrence Livermore National Lab helped her illustrate in detail, the potential for solar energy on tribal lands. She made the case for renewable energy to tribal leaders and led the tribe to drive resource to renewable energy projects, leading tribal communities to take responsibility for their own energy generation and use in especially important to Suzanne because of her deep personal ties to the Navajo Nation and the people. Suzanne is active at conferences like Society of American Indian Government Employees because she gets to interact with the younger students. Especially, she gets to interact with younger people and show them that there are people that look like you, following your passion and success. While it was clear to Suzanne that Native American youth needs to be exposed to the robust and ongoing STEM education, cultural, and socioeconomic barriers hinder educational success, and Suzanne is striving to overcome such obstacles to enrich STEM learning. She was the first cohort to help design training programs and increase the number of Native Americans run STEM businesses for the American Indian Science and Engineering Society. She develops pro programs that promote tribal energy independence, offer affordable off-grid solar energy solutions, and provide training and education to empower families. Suzanne was key to successful lab industry partnership proposed on solar energy integration and building energy management. In 2013, 
California Energy Commission awarded 1.7 million to fund the proposal uh, as a partnership between the lab and Cool Earth Solar Incorporated to combat the community scale renewable energy integration demonstration project at the Livermore Valley Open Campus. These studies fueled her passion to bring sustainable energy to tribal communities and ultimately inspired her to co-found Native American Native Renewables, a nonprofit organization with a mission could could to catalyze clean energy access for Native Americans' homes and communities. I ask Suzanne two questions. What was the most important on your journey and becoming an entrepreneur? She said, not to be afraid to change your course towards your passion. And then I ask the second question. What's the most hardest thing you have to do? It's hard to explain solar in a native language. <laughs> Suzanne represents what C3E is. Just read the sign there. Clean energy, education, and empowerment. She does all those three things. Suzanne, welcome to the C3E tribe. We're here to assist you in your journey. I also added I was really embarrassed. I didn't know my mom was a scientist till later. Yet, she is Suzanne Singer, and she taught in Zatni Nishle, Nakaid in Ambashish Chin, Bipitwodi Dashiche, Doshi and Dasha Nalem. Kintlana de Nasha, Native Renewables, Bach Nashnish, Di de Nebizad Bohoja. Disha ilhiyagi ba hiyatnasin, disha da naeba gande shan din chida yot inagi shanash shananish ishlagi, but nache isilpa e ba hiyatnasin. Hello, my name is Suzanne Singer. I am a member of the the Dine Nation, which you probably better know as the Navajo Nation. Um, I am of the Tangled Clan, born for the Mexican People Clan. My maternal grandfather is the Deer Springs Clan, and my paternal grandfather is the Salt Clan. I'm really honored to be nominated and really thrilled to receive this award, so I appreciate everything um, from the C3E committee. Uh, shout out to my former advisor, Arun Majumdar, at Stanford for nominating me. Um, I really appreciate help from Sandra Begay, who was I met while at Sandia National Labs, and she's my renewable energy superhero and friend. Um, also thank Alyssa Newman, who is one of our board members and friend, and they helped with the process, so I am grateful to them as well. Um, Native Renewables, we formed in 2016 after a chance encounter with our executive director, Wahila Johns, who is also a Diné woman. Um, we met in 2014, and for a few years, we had a lot of conversations about all of the families that didn't have electricity. As you heard her say earlier, there's roughly 15,000 on Navajo alone, and there's a lot more in other indigenous communities around the United States. And the other thing we talked a lot about is we heard a lot of stories from some of the Navajo families in the communities where organizations would come, <clears throat> they would donate a system to the family and then leave. So the families felt like they didn't have anyone to turn to to help maintain the system. So when it stopped working, it wasn't used any longer. So we decided that we were gonna form an organization and we wanted to empower Native people with the technical knowledge to own their power but we also wanted to make sure that we integrated some of our cultural knowledge and teachings around the sun to help make it a holistic and sustainable um, project and effort. So nearly nine months ago, I left my job at Lawrence Livermore. I started doing the nonprofit nights and weekends and I got really exhausted, couldn't do it anymore. The lab let me work part-time and at some point I couldn't do both anymore, it became too hard. And so I transitioned full-time to Native Renewables. I moved back to Arizona to be closer to the Native community that I was working directly with. And I'm super busy, <laughs> I'm always tired. Um, but it's really rewarding because I think one of the things I was missing when I was younger is to find work that actually helped the people in my community or find ways that I could give back. And so some of the projects we've done, um, it's really exciting to hear like some of the, one of the families we did an install for, 
the kids were so excited because they could watch a movie all the way through before the generator ran out of fuel or gasoline. Um, some of the families that talked to us, like now their students can do homework at night. It's a lot easier to do. Because um, when growing up, I think I like to tell people that I got my energy efficiency and water conservation training while being out on the res. Because you can only burn fuel for so long before you have to turn it off, go to sleep. Um, to haul water, like she was saying, it's super intensive. You have to take a truck, drive it somewhere, fill the barrel, siphon the barrels, drive it back, unload it, take your water, siphon it into the barrels, into the water, take it inside, build a fire, chop, well, chop the wood, build the fire, heat up the water, and then use that for what you want it for. And so we definitely learned, I've gotten in trouble before for trying to make swimming pools in sand dunes for my toys. And that helped me realize that water is precious for us, it's um, not a resource to be wasted. And so currently at Native Renewables, we are focused on developing infrastructure for families to have affordable access to off-grid power. Um, we have a triage program where we try to help families diagnose what's wrong with their systems, and that's sort of in response to a lot of the donated systems that were brought onto the reservation. We are hosting and participating in STEM and outreach within the community because we truly believe that they need to have the knowledge to be able to keep this program sustainable. And as we speak, we are currently hosting our very first seven to eight week um, solar workforce off-grid training program out on the reservation. And I guess I'll wave high in case they ever end up watching it, but there's about 10 Navajo participants going through in-class training and hands-on um, training to be able to design and install and maintain off-grid systems. And our goal is to be able to utilize that knowledge as we move forward and we meet our goals. And it, it, it's been really awesome seeing how excited they are to learn and seeing like, the potential for them all to be leaders in their communities. But all of these efforts would not exist without building good partnerships. Um, so I could not do this without my partner, Matthew, who wholeheartedly supports me. I appreciate my families who give me balance. I thank my friends who keep me sane. I give a shout out to my mom for joining me today. Um, she grew up on the res. She said, no water, no running water, no electricity. And she retired a few years ago from the US Geological Survey. And she made contribution to the Mars Exploration Rover Program. So that's really exciting to have that kind of knowledge in your family. Um, I appreciate my father, the engineer, and my siblings, and all my cousins, aunts, aunties, all my big extended family. Native Renewables, we continue to deploy programs. And we couldn't do it without our team, which consists of Wahela, um, who actually is going to watch and Besides energy access, we have internet access issues, so she's going to spend time going out to a spot where she can get Wi-Fi. And a lot of times we have to like hike up to the tallest hill to be able to get cell reception. Um, Gary is our field operations person. Deb Tiwa is our workforce and STEM educator. We have other subcontractors we work with, native subcontractors like Nicholas. Um, we've been fortunate to have some volunteers and a lot of advisors and board members who have helped us push our initiatives forward. And I want to appreciate programs like Energy i -Corps, American Indian Science and Engineering STEM Business Program, Change Labs, and Project Dreamcatchers that are really trying to support STEM businesses and native entrepreneurs. And I think I'd also like us to recognize that November is Native American History Month. It's a time to acknowledge and celebrate and educate yourselves about the resiliency and the beautiful, beautiful culture of the more than 573 federally recognized tribes. And there's many more unrecognized tribes in the United States. And I think as I, as I learn more and grow up more, it's really amazing to hear some of the cultural stories and knowledge that our indigenous peoples have that are embedded, truly embedded in science and engineering, technology, and math. So I think later today or tomorrow, I plan to take some time to learn more about the indigenous inhabitants who are originally from this land, and we appreciate them. And then lastly, I am happily, there's a campaign called Rock Your Mocks, and I'm wearing, well, I'll show you guys later, but I'm wearing moccasins. Um, these belong to my grandmother, 
and I wear them in honor of my ancestors. And I was packing a few days ago, and I haven't worn these in years. I was packing a few days ago, and I looked at, there's a sort of a silver buckle on there, and it was the sun symbol, which I think was really, I got super excited. It's like, okay, this is, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure I believe in signs, but this, if this is a sign, this is shows this is where exactly I am, where I need to be. So with that, I want to thank you all. Okay. And enjoy the rest of your day.